want to thank everyone for coming out this evening to uh, study a portion of God's Word together. I pray that you'll uh, take out a Bible and follow along. and Hopefully you can take something from it and apply it to our lives to help us to become better Christians in our uh, daily walk. Tonight's lesson is entitled, A Lesson from the Cicada. Um, oftentimes we don't really appreciate something until it's gone. Um, perhaps you didn't realize or appreciate the cicada invasion that we recently had. Well, I thought it would be a good idea to do a lesson on paralleling the cicada to our spiritual lives. And the first um, point I want to look at is how they sing loudly. Um, they do this to uh, attract a mate. and uh, We need to uh, do the same thing in our spiritual lives. Uh, we need to let Christ radiate um, in our lives as the cicada radiates their um, mating call. The first verse I want to turn to is Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 16. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So there we can see that um, we have to be that light, that shining example um, set up on a hill and it, that light, light will radiate um, throughout the darkness. And then also in 1 Timothy 4 and in verse 12. 1 Timothy 4 and in verse 12. And it reads, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So there we can see... Um, the verse before that was kind of referring to um, the world, and, but here we can see that we also need to be a light and an example to um, those fellow believers um, and fellow Christians. And the next point I want to look at is um, the cicada, they insert their mouths to um, feed. Um, they eat the sap when they're underground on the roots, and then when they're out, they uh, eat off the branches. And just like them, we need to insert ourselves in the Bible and feed on the word which God has um, provided for us for our nourishment. Uh, turn with me to 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. In verse 14, but you must continue in things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which you were. Oh, it's Second Timothy. Yeah, that was right. Three fourteen. I'm sorry. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So there we can see that... Um, the word, it helps to complete us, just as when the cicada eats off that tree, it, it helps to complete it. It helps to sustain its life. And then also in Matthew 4 and in verse 4. Matthew chapter 4 and in verse 4. In verse 4 it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So not only um, do we need to be fed physically, but um, here we can see that we need to um, be fed spiritually, and we do that through, and like we said, inserting um, ourselves into the word and trying to draw as much as we can off of it. And then another um, unique um, trait of the cicadas, they have water repellent wings. And um, we need to be the same way in our spiritual lives when it comes to sin. We need to repel um, sin off of us as Christians. Uh, 
Turn with me to Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. It says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which, is, uh, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So there we can see that um, we have many um, pieces of, um, to help us repel sin, and that is in the form of the armor of God. Um, we, we read there's the sword, uh, which is the word of God, to help us to um, ward off the... Uh, fiery darts of the devil, or we've got the shield that also helps to deflect things. And, I mean, the list goes on. We have, you know, the helmet and your, your uh, belt of truth. And we need to use those to our um, fullest advantage to repel sin. And then um, another odd thing um, that they do, they disappear for many years, 17 years to be exact, with this last brood that we had. And that can be equated with um, falling away. Um, somebody might find Christ and obey the word and be baptized and become part of the church, but then um, they will fall away. Uh, turn with me to Revelations 2, verses 4 through 5. Revelations 2, verses 4 through 5. It says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. So we can see that it is possible to be in Christ, and then, as, as we can see, um, lose your first love and fall away. And that kind of flies in the face of um, other denominations. They say, oh, you know, once you're saved, you're always saved. You know, no worries. But that's not um, what we read in God's Word. And also in Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 13. Matthew 24, 10 through 13. And in verse 10, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So they're um, showing that we have to endure, we have to fight the good fight, and just stay persevering and do what God wants. And in the end, we um, can have a hope in heaven if we do his will. And the next little um, neat tidbit is, um, obviously they have two eyes, you know, big red beady eyes, you can't miss them. But they also have three other eyes right in the middle of their head. And those are called osal eyes. And they can detect light. And Obviously, they can detect, detect light. They can um, detect darkness, which is the absence of light. And we as Christians need to have those um, to see the light. And uh, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. And it says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. So if we do what we talked, uh, talked about earlier, inserting ourselves into the word and drawing from it, um, which is equivalent to you know, studying, we will be able to see what is right and wrong. Uh, we'll be able to see the light. And then also in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 16, over one chapter and verse, uh, one book in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 16. And it reads, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So by being in the doctrine, you can see the light and be saved. And um, like we um, talked about earlier once again, um, be an example to others. You can save others in the process. And then they have a defense mechanism, and that is to fly away when threatened. Um, whether, I mean, I'm, I'm sure most people have tried to catch them. I know me and Harold, we went out trying to catch some for fish, and what they do, they flew away. You know, they, they fled us. Or whether you're out trying to get some for your tacos or your salads, you know, that some of them get away. Well, um, we need to be the same way in our spiritual lives. Uh, we need to flee the devil, and we resist him. Uh, Romans 6, uh, 13 and 14. Turn with me there, please. Romans 6, 13 and 14. And it says, Do not present yourselves members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from, dead, from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. And I want to look at one more. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and in verse 13. In verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. So there we can see that no matter the temptation, God, he'll give us a way out. Um, just like the cicada, they have a way out. They have wings. They can fly. We need to fly away from um, temptation. And then... Uh, turn with me to 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 through 12. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, and godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of my witness, of many witnesses. So if we flee from temptation and sin, we have to go somewhere, and um, that place is righteousness and goodness and, and all the other things that we listed in there. And we need to cling to it like that cicada. It will cling to like the branch when you try to grab it. It holds on for dear life. We need to hold on to God and righteousness with all our, our might. And they have a short lifespan, and I'm uh, talking more of their time out of their um, crustacean form, the six weeks or whatever it was. It didn't really seem like six weeks even. Um, but our lives, just like them, are short. Turn with me to James 4, verses 13 and 14. James chapter 4, 13 through 14. And it reads, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to him. Nope, that's not it. James 4, 13 through 14. says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So that we can see that tomorrow is not granted to us. Um, we only have today. I don't know what, um, if 
the cicadas think or whatever, but you know, maybe they've thought about, you know, what they're going to do and then a bird comes down and grabs them. You know, you never know. Just like, you know, Ed was saying, you know, he could have a heart attack and what shortly after he did. Uh, we just don't know. And that's why we need to live for God every day and, and try and do his will and do what he says. <clears throat> And then another characteristic is um, they leave scarring on the trees. I'm sure everybody's seen all the dead limbs, and that's called flagging. And uh, we also need to leave an impression with people, um, just like the cicada leaves an impression on the tree. Um, and that needs to be done maybe when they meet us. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 7. And starting in verse 12. And it says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So if we are treating, the peop uh, treating people the way that um, we would want to be treated in a bad situation, then uh, we may certainly leave an impression on people. Um, it's pretty uncommon nowadays for um, people not to lash out um, and want to get even. And I didn't think about it till now, but um, all the things that are going on in the world, you know, people being disrespectful and lashing out, and it may not even be warranted, which it's not. Um, and there's no excuse for it. But if um, we strive to do what is right, then uh, maybe it'll cause somebody to question hey you know what what's he doing different you know he's he's different you know, leave an impression on him. they might ask and lead somebody to God and then finally um, they have when they come out they have uh, you know, like I said before they have the, the crustacean form well when the uh, cicada comes out they shed that exoskeleton and leave it behind and we as uh, new Christians uh, when we're baptized we need to shed the old life, never again to return. Uh, turn with me to Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Ephesians chapter 4, <clears throat> 22 through 24. In verse 22, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So there it's just reiterating that we need to put off that old self um, and become anew. And also in 2 Corinthians 5 and in verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Just like when the uh, cicada comes out, it's white, it's pristine, it's clean. Um, and we need to, and we are the same way when we come to Christ and be baptized for the remission of sins. It washes away and we become, you know, almost white. You know, we're pure. White stands for purity. And um, we need to be careful not to um, go back to that. Um, how many of the, you know, cicadas that have molded have you seen come back to that old, ugly, nasty-looking, you know, crustacean thing? You don't, you don't see it. That's not natural. And we, as Christians, shouldn't return to our old self, our old body. And um, Peter gives a good... Um, description of that in 2 Peter 2 and in verse 22. 2 Peter 2 and in verse 22. In verse 22, but it happened to them according uh, to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed who are wallowing in the mire. So we can see that um, sin is a nasty thing, and we don't want to go back to it. Um, so if 
um, you have once um, obeyed the gospel and put off that old man and and have you know if, as we just read here return to that um, sin and and wallowed in it or if you have not yet um, came to Christ and put off that old man or if she just need the prayers of the congregation come forward now while we stand and sing